What is good? Fast crack for all them fast times. <laughs> Little combine reaction, son. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh man, the combine's over now. I know everything. All right, well we're we're back. We're That's ready to Twitter, roll. anyways. Jesus, we got the combine done and uh, dead and gone, like uh, JT said. Was Took that, forever to get those running JT? backs. Like, come oh, on. My God. Killing me with those old linemen. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get some. I couldn't get a little bit of uh, like flashing in on the broad jump and the and the uh, like yeah. just cr killing me with every drill of the old lineman here. Right. Not. It's it's important. I'm not. I'm not. Not to know, me. Not, I mean, not to me, but to somebody. <laughs> um, so we are obviously talking about fantasy football as per usual. Um, we got some. We got pretty much all the combine results. Some of them may vary a little bit. Uh, in a day or two for maybe some of these running backs but says official yeah we, we shall see um says a fish but really you know this is just another piece of the puzzle and we'll get the rest of the pieces to the puzzle uh after we get draft capital involved <gasps> um, drink but this is this is you know certainly another little check mark off the offseason list of of you know more so i don't think it's It'll bring you a name that maybe you say, hey, I need to go back and check that out. Well, uh, whether you haven't heard of them or not, or another, a guy who was over or under expectations that you need to go back and watch the film and say, hey, does this make sense or does this not make sense? It's, right. it's really kind of the two two biggest things that I view this as is like, hey, we need these things to match up. Uh, and then, you know, we're not even going to take it too far and we'll see what then the draft capital is again. Um so, you know, I liked I, I liked Isaiah Spiller just like just about anybody else, but wasn't sure exactly where to place him. And then you get the bad combine and then the bad draft capital. So inevitably that has to knock you down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, the combine certainly isn't the end all be all for everything. Uh, but I will say that I think what the big positive out of this particular one was is that it seemed like it was sort of a weak quarterback class in general. Like that was kind of the connotation behind it everybody was kind of unsure a lot of yeah buts Bryce Young maybe still has a little bit of the yeah but but it was the one that everybody felt pretty much the most comfortable about and was kind of solidified up there and now CJ Stroud is finally seeming to have climbed up that mountain and and maybe even surpassed Bryce Young in some people's minds so that's really good for your super flex value and then on top of that Anthony Richard comes in Anthony oh. Richardson comes in and just breaks oh. the combine oh. and you know Yes, we knew he was fast, but we didn't, you know, uh, most people didn't realize that it was going to be, you know, record setting in most categories good. Um, so if you watch the tape, which I've watched a little bit of it, like he looks ridiculous. You know, he's got a twitch and it's like, right. And I, I guess you baby didn't know that he was basically Lamar Jackson put inside a Cam Newton's body. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. And then break, you know, just breaking every record at the combine for athletic scores and all that stuff. And then looking great, and it was a cool little backstory that uh, I forget the gr the girl's name on the sideline. Um, um, I'm drawing a blank. Gales. Right a lot of names are running through yeah, his head right now. Right, uh, but she talked to him and like got his backstory about his mom and his little. He's got like a brother that's seven years younger and how they grew up running, moving around, and he was working jobs to pay money to support the family, and he was basically like the dad to his little brother, and like he's doing all this for them. So, you know, right. It's fun to get those little backstories and. Seemed like a good dude and like crushed the interview after the ha after hand and like looked good in the throwing drills. Like obviously he has a cannon, but I was listening to Lance uh, Zerloin talk on Move the Sticks and he was like, you know, I was impressed with the short area uh, deliveries on, on, on a, a decent amount of those throws. I think I got to go and up his score on NFL.com, which right. right now he's a six three five, and I think he wanted to move him up to like a six five, which is a, a boomer bust player there's the Raz score let me pull up the combine here yeah from the nfl network but you can see the ridiculous numbers that right anthony richardson posted a 40 and a half inch vert and 10 9 broad like so yeah right so what again i'm kind of getting back to what i was alluding to was like it, it really helped your super flex and you could throw a tight end premium in there and we'll get to the tight ends at the end here but i feel like your one one which we already knew what it was with Bijan, but your one and to your one four all just got stronger yeah and when the quarterbacks get stronger in a super flex draft just the overall top end of the draft just by proxy gets stronger and that's what we just got right here yeah. um i think yeah um, i mean i 
A hundred percent. And I've been answering a lot of comments on the YouTube page where people are just, you know, who do I take with this pick? And I'm like, man, how am I supposed to know right now who you should take with this pick? I hope right. your draft isn't tomorrow because I'll be Ill, Ill, ignorant and, right. and Ill advised. silly. Yeah. Right. Don't do that shit. And, and I'm like, but every time they're like, it's like a decent like trade where I could go either way. I'm like, just hold the pick. Just hold that top right. pick. It's usually like one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. Right. I'm like, those picks are going up in value as we get towards the draft and past it. Like it's only going to get more right. valuable. And I feel very good now, which it's just so wild. I'd like to take a second to just comment on the combine and everyone's reaction to it in general. It's like, it changes so many things for people. This just in an instant. It's, and it's like, it shouldn't change that much for people. Like right. the, the thing that like everyone now is all over Anthony Richardson. And it was like half of those people were shitting on him. Right. And it's like, it didn't change like anything you saw on tape. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And what I think it did do is it solidified him as a first round pick. Like a pro- probably like a high, I mean, shit, he could be the first quarterback off the board. I don't know. People are like talking shit about Bryce Young now. Cause he didn't do anything. Right. And he didn't like leave a great taste in anyone's mouth. And he's standing there next to these other right. fucking giants, you know, looking like barely six feet, not even six, five, 10, right. one eighth inch. And did come into a four. Shout out to him for doing that. But like, you know, it's just I, that's why I'm so mad at like just scrolling through Twitter. Is to me, it's exhausting because all these people that are like now, oh, this guy's dead to me, or oh, this guy's the best ever. And it's just like, oh, now I know everything. And it's like, right. no, you don't know anything. It's just some numbers, some guys in some fucking shorts. Like Calvin Ridley had a bad broad. He was like, I've never been asked to line up on the line of scrimmage and broad jump. Like right. shit doesn't matter. Like yeah, I yeah. Can calculate explosion. He ran a fast forty, but he was fucking good in the NFL. The metrics didn't tell you that at the combine. Like. Well, but these outliers, and none of the fucking people want to find the outlier. It's just like they'd rather miss on the outlier. I don't want to do that. I want to see who's good at football and what they look like on the film. And then, you know, this is a piece of the puzzle, and it does change value out there in them streets. So you need to be aware of that and adjust accordingly because that's what everyone else is thinking. Yeah, that's that's the way I look at this game a lot is, yes – like I stated when I first started, I kind of tell you how the, what, what it changes for me and what I how I use this to go back and look and change little things around and draft capital will be the next thing that you use to retool and get sure. a semifinal ranking. Draft capital but way more important than all what, that shit. What you're doing now is is you're kind of using that in that 1-1 one, one to 1-4 one, getting stronger was basically based on didn't really change all that much for me I had I we came in the very first rookie mock we did I said Anthony Richardson probably should be up here because of these him, reasons you took him at one two and I was like people are not gonna like that and they, then we did an industry mock and you decided just to let him go to see right. how far he would fall which I think he made it to one eight mm-hmm. and now no shot some people are saying he but, should be the one one. But going back to what you were kind of alluding to is is the court of public opinion for me is is so important. Whether I agree or disagree, it's going to start setting value markers. And now you can now you know where those are and you can, you know, weave around them or, or gain the value from people's opinions that maybe you don't agree with that you've done your own research on and figured out that, hey, I think this is overvalued or undervalued. And that's really how you play this game. You shouldn't get too caught up in the exact player, but you should get it caught up in some tiers and saying, hey, overvalued, undervalued. Let me move around here or jump up here. Um, as far as the QBs, like I said, I think they all really solidified themselves really one, two, three in Superflex. It got one one through four a lot stronger. Levis wasn't even terrible. It, what um, did he did he improve he his stock? I mean, I don't think I think he's still kind of right around there. Um, but you know, because I feel like there was some hate on the, some of them throws and drills. Maybe. Like he wasn't maybe super accurate, but, and they were they were actually dogging him for his footwork and his training, like because he was taking like a weird. Yeah. angle to release the ball and they he's, were like he's still going to be just fine in the in the overall picture of the nfl draft and he'll he's, probably a first round super flex pick sure but i don't know if like you know if he's a top four or no five. well that's why i was saying one through four because those three yeah. quarterbacks that we took so you to, weren't including i wasn't Levis including him that. i was saying Bijan because okay. we know what it is right. and one through four those yeah. gain value yeah. stroud put on a clinic there and he's got the height and the weight and well, stroud and puts on a his clinic athletic on right. the field right. right you didn't see him throwing these dimes out on the field but that but i'm saying in the court of public opinion it boosted yeah. those up which helps that one through four get sure. grow even sure. more um so that that was a big gain from this combine uh, for anybody holding any of those picks um, that, that you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. And then the Anthony Richardson, yeah, maybe you didn't know it was that good, so he boosts up there a little bit for you. And for the for the haters, like, 
you either just, I mean, I've seen Lamar Jackson come in and, uh, you know, I'm so much less worried about you being able to play the actual, like, can he play quarterback? I used to ask the same damn question. And I'm still, like, I know people might hate on me for this. I'm still not 100% sure I have every answer for that from Lamar Jackson even. I think he's very good at at being a dynamic player, but sometimes the quarterback play is up and down. And can he get you to the promised land from an NFL? Right, and I don't even I don't even point. give a shit. But we're talking about right. fantasy, and from a fantasy, fantasy perspective, let me get Lamar Jackson. Right. And they did a good job of mostly building the scheme around him. Now they could have put some better weapons. The better example of that is Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts has made good improvements, but they did a great job of building the scheme around them. Sick offensive Run, line, trade putting for rushing AJ forward Brown, with with crushed a, it with Devontae right, Smith, and putting rushing forward with Jalen Hurts and a, and a, a, a myriad of backs behind him, good backs, and then adding uh, you know AJ uh, Brown and Devonta Smith was a great pick, and a good old line obviously helps all that stuff Monsters. out, and and. Justin Fields was not great this year yet. Yeah, all those guys that I just named can make good throws, but they also have Some times where you're like, bad what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. And I'm not shitting on any of those guys. I, for fantasy, I want them all. Right. And Anthony Richardson really isn't any different. Like, if you're telling me that Anthony Richardson can't put up points the same way that Fields put up points right now in the way that Anthony Richardson is constructed as a human being, you're fucking crazy. I, yeah. I, I, this is, it seems like an easy 20 points per game, and he's going to get the draft capital and hopefully the biggest piece of the puzzle is going to be which i've been saying this since i said hey you got to take him at one two in that first thing was it's just going to depend on will you like jalen hurts could have been a failure lamar jackson could have been a failure uh we're not sure about justin fields yet we think he's going to be good but we're not sure and, and he hasn't maybe gotten the best crack the at surrounding them him. and right that's what i'm saying the situation might right. fail him but they haven't failed those other two guys and we're, we're kind of waiting and seeing with lamar if he's going to get a change of scenery or not either way he's getting a change of scenery whether it's offensive coordinator wise and scheme or just new in general new together. team i don't know if so, anybody can afford him that's just that. That's Anthony. You know, you can be mad about well whether he can play or not, but I I'm not mad because I'm not I'm not worried in the least of him being able to put up 20 points uh, fantasy per game if he's out there playing, uh, and even if he sits for most of like has a Lamar like trajectory or even sits for a whole first year, I don't even care. Like whatever, fine. Like and you could say, hey, you're you're burning up that pick, and it's like, N am I? Like you, there's. You miss all the time on these fucking picks. And yes, you want to take as much out of it as you can, but like, God damn, that's a whole lot of fun. Uh, yeah. And what are we doing that, here? Taking you know? that stab, you know, and, and a lot of y'all who are out there giving advice. I know y'all for a fact pay for like $20, $50 leagues. Definitely take them at one, two. If you're playing for 250, maybe, maybe not or 500 or a thousand, maybe, but then shit, that's a fucking, that's a big difference maker. And if you want to, if you want to trade, if, if you're saying, Hey, I don't really want any of these quarterbacks I'm set, then even you, you, your trade value went up. Either way, you don't have to draft any one of these guys to, to, to cash in on the value. You can certainly trade out of there. I'm not saying you must. I'm just giving you the reason for why Anthony Richardson is and has been very intriguing. Yeah. Um, so that the, the only thing that wasn't intriguing about him was how much does the NFL like him? Well, I didn't know right. that answer. And I think that there is no way he doesn't go in the first round. Like, he's definitely getting drafted in the first round, and he's probably going to be a top 15 pick and might be the first quarterback off the board. Could, Some people are – he might go – like, the Bears might right. trade him to someone. You know what I mean? Like, someone could come up and get him at one. Uh, I do think he'll probably have to wait for a minute. That would be probably best if he could sit, you know, do the Mahomes thing where he sits out a year and learns from somebody good. But if he gets that dra that draft capital, then you know he's going to stick around, right? He's not going to – like Malik Willis might never get a real shot. Right. You know, third-round quarterback, that's basically a fourth- or fifth-round quarterback. Right. Because every quarterback – like, if you're a second-round quarterback, you go in the first round. Like, your value is just elevated because of the position. Yeah. And so if he was taken in the third round, that means, you know, he was not even a third-round quarterback player yeah you know what i mean so he could never see the field i think right. he'll probably get a shot but like he, that, that could not work out and but you knew that after the draft right now anthony richardson is a totally different specimen you know malik Willis is like six one not that big like anthony richardson He's is thickish but uh, anthony richardson freak. is a, is a and specimen cannon and seems like a good dude super young like i mean 
That's the appeal of taking that twenty. And from young the people who do this, quarterback is you can mold him and you know the best is yet to come. Basically, people who know. do this at a professional level much more than I, uh, you know, do say that the processing is really good for him. There's he just hasn't played all that much. He is a little raw. You're gonna, there is gonna and you, there's you some hate about that to, right on the internet, and it's like he was at fucking Florida. How bad have they been at using their fucking Abs- talent? I, just, I was literally at my buddy's house today just watching the, the combine and letting the kids play for a minute because we were out on a bike ride or whatever. And, and he kind of asked some of these same questions. And it was like, no, yeah, that, that's that's exactly right. Right there. You know? Yeah. I mean, we could go on about Anthony Richardson all day. Is he the one one? Uh, no, you got. I'm sticking with Bijan. Sticking there. with Bijan. Like, yeah, I think you got. Saw stick some with people being like, he's right, see, be see, the one see one. right there. That's I got it. You got to stick with Bijan. There's no reason if you're, regardless of how much money you're playing with or whatever. Like, obviously, if you've got a bad team and you really, 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 really want to just get a ton of assets and somebody to give you the Godfather deal, then you trade the one one. But for the most part, just take Bijan and me. Like me and Big Co talked about it. Like you can just. In a month or two, you can trade Bijan for for probably even more because once he gets on your team, he's really hard. We, I, I've always said that if you want a guy, get him before he gets on that person's team because nine times out of ten, it's a whole lot harder to get him off that person's right. team once he gets on. And I think because if I trade you the pick, you might not take the guy I want. Right, and so I, I might trade you the pick. I think those now that now all the way back to one four feels a little bit like that where you can take you em, can take, take those em. guys unless you get the Godfather offer and then what, what have we been what have we been talking about with super flex startups right now like how outside of like the top six eight quarterbacks we're like hey is there any really elite guys left and I've, I've kind of had the feeling right now that this offseason I feel the most comfortable finding a two if I need to for yeah. a reasonable value now I still like you know quarterbacks as a good currency for trade value in super flex so I'll still take them um in startups and whatnot if the value's right but I feel like you know people are searching for who who are those next elite kind of guys because hey it looks like right now there's might only be six or eight depending on who you like and and some of those eight are, are still maybe even a little bit of a question mark of how great does this feel but now maybe these guys are, can can fill a little bit of that in so um all right, let's get off the quarterbacks and let's let's transition to wide receivers. I don't I don't think in this situation all that much has changed for me. This combine, I, uh, you know, not too much has really dictated much change for me. And, you know, and I'm, I'm not super deep, but definitely there's some guys that I need to go look at because I didn't I didn't really know much about them. Um, and, you know, right off the rip with the with the wide receivers, uh, you have the guy from West Virginia. What's his name? Um, drawing a blank here I'm drawing a blank because I didn't know his name uh, before this um, it is da, 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 Bryce Ford Wheaton um, obviously you know we're in a class of smaller uh, smaller king wide receivers here and this guy comes in as a big uh, 6'4 221 and absolutely lights it up uh, with the with the RAS score um, 9.6 in that a lot of green boxes um, just, just crush it. I have absolute, I can't even speak on him because I have never watched his tape. I don't know anything about him, uh, but he crushed it. So you, you got to kind of go look at that guy. Uh, there is another guy up there from Princeton. I don't really know that guy either. Uh, I, I'm probably not going to get too caught up in looking into that. And maybe that's a mistake, but you know, one guy's at West Virginia, one guy's at Princeton. Those are, you know, yeah, a little well, bit different things. Andre, uh, Yoshi, y- Yoshivas. Right. And we'll see what the draft says on that. If, if the draft says, hey, you got to go back and look at this guy. Same thing with Wheaton. I'll still t- I'll take a peek at Wheaton before the draft and we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but at, at the top of, of Yoshivas, very intriguing to know nothing about him. Princeton. I like that. Uh, and then obviously just crushed everything, you know, crushed right. good 40. He's 6'3", 205. So a bigger guy. Ridiculous explosion. Uh, sub seven second three cone drill, just you know, great everything and elite explosion. So you, right, I mean, I'm very intrigued. See, 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 very intrigued. Um, at the top of this thing hasn't really changed all that much. I don't think for any of the receivers for me. JSN probably stays at the top. Doesn't run the forty, but. Least good for him. Good for fucking him. Right. Good for these guys for saying fuck you. Hey, and good for your agents for tell or whoever's yeah. in charge for telling you, hey, don't do this. Like, there's no reason to. Yeah. Um, and maybe he will run the forty at the combine or at the pro day, but sure. he doesn't even need to at this point. Who nah. gives a fuck? Maybe like, not. You know, at he's all. not fast, but he showed you that when we we did a, a profile on him, and I and I did then I did a short out of it, and basically we said it on the profile. I said it on the short. Don't let getting not fast caught up with not being athletic because right. that's not the case. He right. is 
right. very athletic. He showed it to you. He proved it to you. Right. And now I think because elite of agility score, right, because of maybe Addison not having that elite agility score has definitely probably cemented himself as 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 the one one of receivers uh, in the NFL draft. It, uh, I don't know about the NFL draft. We shall see. But I think in fantasy people's minds, I think he is pretty much locked in there at this is that point what now. You, got? you want to move? Uh, yeah, JSN for sure. I, I had one? I had JSN and Addison in one tier, and that's basically where I'm staying. Um, you know, uh, and then Quinton Johnston and Zay Flowers kind of below, maybe Quinton in his own and Zay then starting another tier. Um, but none of that is written in stone. That's just where I've been, how I've been feeling it out right now. Um, Zay's slowly been creeping up for everyone. Right. I had and him at four. So when you listen to uh, first take, you know, Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper fucking love that guy. Yeah. Uh, so do so I. it's amazing to hear how bad they're talking about this class and how bad it is. Like it's overall. Right. It's not the skill positions that it's more. So, it's, it's, but even like people are down on this wide receiver sure, class because there's sure. no like elite. You know, you don't have someone with Quentin Johnston's athletic ability and jsn's like receiving ability put into one right. you know what i mean there's kind of Techni- like technical yeah meeting athleticism which quentin Ugh. came in at six two i guess people are down, mad about that maybe uh, but he posted everything else didn't time, run the 40 good time. for fucking him too right good for him not run the 40 and then that, a ridiculous broad and right. hurt he came in big time with the explosion stuff and then you know i think you'll see a 40 from him probably at his pro day and you probably see a, a 40 for most of these guys and then you know jordan addison being you know quote unquote maybe the loser for a lot of people but if you know the 449 you know it's real close to 45 okay but 44 is still a pretty fast fucking guy and he came in a little shorter and maybe a hair lighter than you thought he would be but you kind of knew what it was like what it's semantics whether he's, he's six foot or 511 or whatever the hell he came in at um you know, and then came in light, a little lighter than you thought. Maybe you thought he was 180s, 173, 171. This is 171. I thought he was 173, but I thought I saw 173 too. Yeah. But either way, like, look, there are certain t- now. Look, if Jordan Addison goes and says, and the NFL draft now says, "Hey, you're a third round pick," not gonna happen. Not, I don't think it's gonna happen either. I think he probably he's probably gonna stay in the first round. I can't see him not being a first round um, pick. But if that happens, then hey, yeah, maybe he's gonna fall out of this tier for me. But right now, I I watch this guy play, and when he's out on the field, he is an elite separator. He's a technician as a route runner, and the speed at four four nine is is plenty fast for me. Um, so he's he's staying right up there for me, you know, and I, you know, you could go through Twitter and there's people killing him for that. And no, he, he dropped down or, oh, then people have taken victory laps because, oh, he's my wide receiver four already. <laughs> like, all right, cool, man. Like, that's fine. We'll, we'll see what happens. And in and, and five years, we'll revisit this take and nobody will remember where you had him as whatever wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And if you had him at wide receiver five and he's awesome, you certainly will never say a word. Um, but probably not. You, you know, own your L's. It's, it's like this. You watch it, you see he has a bad combine, then you see some comments on some particular people's things of saying, hey, I watched the film on Jordan a- on Addison, and, and yeah, this combine matches right up. There's, you know, this film wasn't great. There's nothing to lead about him, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, this is why film guys get a bad rap because everybody shouldn't be out there watching film. Right. And then the same yeah. guy who's following up on that saying that, yeah, the Addison film was bad, was, was over there telling you how great – Boutte is about to crush this combine and it's like again you just you just told me that your eyes aren't the best and I'm not saying that mine are either I'm just saying they're a little better than that guys um, <laughs> and some people should just stick to the numbers uh, and you know that everybody's not everybody's eyes aren't created equally I can't break it down like a scout breaks it down but I think my eyes are slightly above average and you know my our track record in, in finding rookies and being with rookies I think is has done enough for me to say, I think I'm slightly above average at yeah. looking at these things yeah. and, and being able to judge this. Matt's quick to point out our, our misses, but there's not that many of them, you know? We fucked up with Isaiah Spiller. If I Hakeem had a list Butler. of Matt's fucking <laughs> rankings, it would it would be fucking just giant red circles of misses through whole fucking sections, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Nah, He's not I here mean, to defend himself. Fair. Uh, Hakeem Butler's lighting up the XFL. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so is Josh Gordon, apparently. Good for him. Uh... 
but it hasn't been that many and we've found so many diamonds in the roughs and we've gone against the grain when it was necessary and if i'm about to get a discount on jordan addison because people think he had a bad combine then fuck yeah yeah fuck yeah let me get him into a I, bad I, landing spot too you know i It'll guess be you like, could see or a better landing spot no I'm, well like because he goes later like in the first goes, round <laughs> if he goes to a bad landing spot people are gonna hate that right. too. bad combine bad landing spot i'm out but it's like you got garrett wilson at 112 in one of these fucking drafts because nobody liked was, the jets right. right and people were obsessed with other things yeah yeah sure that's what happens and you like know james cook people probably get, went before oh yeah james cook brian robinson Damian Pierce. Jesus these are late. Christ. These are late in the in these the are late rookie draft, which rake. is how you should do it, kids. I like them late. Um, <laughs> Better than early. <laughs> yeah, um, but no. I mean, I, I'm sticking with Addison. What I see on tape. Yeah, it, I don't know it, how you can say the tape is bad. He's no, fucking lighting people just, the fuck I up. I, yeah. What are you watching? Right. He's got like M- Michael Parsons tweeted out. He was like, he's football fast for real, right. for real. Like right. he ran. It was like a four five four at the time, and then he got a four four. Four nine on the last right. one, and that's what stuck. You never know what's gonna happen with these official times, but I mean four four nine, whatever. That's fucking fine. The people are acting like if you have bad metrics, then you can never be good. Right. Like watch the fucking it's, tape. It's a piece of the puzzle, and the tape's good. Now you could say that maybe you thought that he would, could be a little more versatile, which I, I do think he can be a little more versatile. And maybe you're now you're saying because of the height, weight, and all that equation together, you're saying that he's he doesn't small. fit. He he's doesn't fit into light. any sort of wide receiver one category. I give you that, uh, but I I didn't think he was going to fit into those regardless. I didn't think he was that much bigger than that, and I certainly didn't think he was that much heavier than that. If you're actually watching him, you can see him on the field as opposed to other players. He's not a giant man, uh, but he's fucking a technician and very quick and very fast a um, late separator the feet are great and you can't put your hands on him at the line of scrimmage even though he is small he's so he's so fucking quick with those feet i'm surprised so, he didn't run a three cone drill but uh but good no for him whatever you know n- not not really dropping addison too far down for me at all really i'm not dropping him at all and so quentin um, you're still taking addison over quentin yes i'll take uh, probably so as of right now yes um, most times, haven't, most times haven't had, I wouldn't do it every time if I've yeah. got six drafts, I'll definitely take some Quentin. Yeah. Um, but no, I think Quentin Johnson stays kind of right where he is. I think I, and nothing really shifted around for me all that much. There, there are some other guys that I want to go look at. Um, I thought, um, AT Perry, I, I got to go take a look. I got, I got to look some more at Perry. I've, you know, he, he's, he's a big fella. He had a nice little green score. He looked pretty smooth out there. Nice. Um, you know, I think he's going to translate into a nice little pro receiver um, and c- could be a nice number two for somebody or, or a number one if Addison's your number two. Like kind of kind of kind of deal uh, there. I thought uh, Cedric Tillman had a nice little combine for himself. He's got himself a green uh, RAS score here. Uh, and he's, he's one of those bigger wide receivers in this group. Uh, came in at 6'3", 213. Um, you know, obviously not a blazing fast combine, but 4'5", uh, the ten yard split was okay, one five six, um, and then the vertical and the broad and the explosive category were were extremely you know really pretty good. Uh, he's he's got the great green composite explosion score. So Tillman and I like the Tillman tape a lot. I know we had Riley on here. I wasn't here on that episode, but he liked Tillman. I know Matt likes Tillman, um, and then his running partner Hyatt doesn't run the blazing fast speed this the blazing fast 40 time that you might have thought it was going to be but 440 flat is still extremely fast and all the other categories were were also very good for him i'm not sure that he's gonna maybe him not putting that exclamation point on that 40 time that that has bought some other guys first round picks that maybe didn't quite deserve it a la john ross kind of guys uh maybe that doesn't do it for jalen hyatt there um but he he will be somewhere floating around there still uh, and I think he's, for me, a bit more of a, a real life asset, asset than necessarily asset. a fantasy asset. A little raw kind of seems like a little bit more of a one trick pony. Uh, yeah, but that, small, could, that could turn into something great. And six foot 176. So people obviously aren't going to like that. And then, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever uh, seen someone get so much shit for running a four four. Yeah, flag. right. Like, 
Oh, well, he's no good. It's because the expectation was maybe a 4-2 something. Well, you know. maybe, you know, if we can sit here and say Jordan Addison is football fast, then we can certainly say that he's Which faster thought, than that we on thought in that, pads. Uh, we, we, you know, a lot of people, what's his face? The guy from, the other guy from TCU a while ago who was a bus regger, we thought there was a chance that he could get in the 4-2s and then he was in like the 4-4s four or whatever he was in and it was just like, you know, oh shit. Still ended up uh, having a really bad pick there by the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, but 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 back to Jalen Hyatt. I mean, yeah, this says four four flat. I don't know. I thought it yeah. was a four four two, but maybe the no, I saw four four flat. Okay, so fucking even better. Uh, but then elite explosion to go with that, right? Right. Right. So it's not just the forty. He's not just long speed, but he's he's explosive. And so I get it though. He he doesn't have a big route tree. Who really does? Weird, he was never weird, pressed. Weird, weird scheme. Who really was. Right. But they did have a great scheme. They did put him in motion a Very lot. Friendly. They got him behind another wide receiver. Yep. They got him matched up with safeties, and he was fucking slaying it. Uh, I would like to go back and watch some tape. I don't. I, I need to go back and watch the Georgia game, and you know maybe the Alabama game, and and just I haven't. You know I I watched a decent amount of Tennessee, but it's hard in the broadcast games they're not really showing yeah, you what the wide receivers, receivers are doing it's, it's tough you got to right. get that all 22 view right so i got to check out and see what what all 22s we have access to him and, and check that out for sure but i mean i almost just want to like him because people are mad at him <laughs> for running a 4-4 four four. i'm like yeah god damn um, what is going on here because that's fucking fast yeah oh he's fast it's sure. not will fuller i think will fuller had a, like a 4 2 8 or something ridiculous yeah, maybe I'm it was a 4-3-1 sure. Um, and he developed, you know, he was, he was making plays in the, he was right there and then fell off right at, right at, so I don't know what weird, weird, he uh, was hot for a second though. And if you wanted to get out of him, you could have, he had have plenty of opportunities. List. I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's something happened to him. There's a just, lot of people on the Epstein list. Yeah, trying to release that thing. Uh, Rashi Rice had a nice yes. combine. Um, not the fastest 40 that maybe you were, you thought you might be in the four fours there, but four, five, one, um, he's, uh, but but decent. He's like fifth on this score of wide receivers. Decent size for Raz scores nine six, six one. five. That means he's good. Six uh six one two oh four. You know pretty pretty solid there. And then you know four five one in the forty four four point uh or one point four nine in the ten yard split, which kind of could you know kind of coincide with a little bit of that explosion grade um which elite explosion he's he's 41 kind of inch vert and a 10 foot broad ton of production from him at smu this year kind of stepped in into the into he's a, a bigger role old. he's a little bit older um uh, but I, I i like what's going what's been going on with rice it'll yeah be nice to see it'll be interesting to see what the draft capital ends up being on on rice there uh but uh, you know kind of a kind of a player that i've tentatively got you know floating anywhere from the bottom of the second to maybe mid potentially upper second, uh, depending on how some of these running backs pan out. It's starting to get thin in that second round. Uh, it seemed like it may have thinned out a little bit, but maybe because we'll get to the running backs here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, Marvin Mims had a nice day uh, to, to put him kind of on the map. And I need to definitely go check that out. I haven't gotten super deep into him. Um, Downs had a good day. Yeah. Flowers had a pretty good day. Um, so, you know, guys that we all, everybody already kind of likes and knows are kind of staying up near the top. Uh, I know Riley, we had him on. He had, he, he's, uh, scouted Grant DeBose and said, kind of look out for him. And he's, he's a bit bigger of a, of a player here. Um, he went to Charlotte, so not on a whole lot of people's radar, but you know, six two two oh one. Again, any of those guys who are a little bit bigger bodied framed where we got a lot of Addisons and and flowers and downs and you, you, some smaller ish quick receivers, and then you got JSN who's a little who's obviously you know up in that range, but maybe not quite quote unquote as athletic as maybe you'd want him to be, although he was fantastic in the you know he's not as fast as you want him to be, but athletic is, is through the roof as, as we, I think we kind of knew. Do you, is there anybody else that you kind of want to touch on? I like, I've been liking a little Rakeem uh, Jarrett from Maryland there. Um, and then I think uh, one guy who I really haven't checked much out on is uh, Jonathan Mingo from Ole Miss there. Uh, he put up a very good score. Um, 9.65 in, in the RAS score there. Um, I'm looking nine, for nine, three. Or sorry, yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. Here uh, it is. Nine nine three in the Raz, which is I think it was second best. Um, uh, but 
Yeah, second best RAS score, which is a relative athletic score. This is kind of like the first season I've really heard so much about this thing. Uh, I mean, this guy's been doing it for a while. No, I'm talking about the RAS. Oh, you're saying the guy that? who does the RAS, yeah. Uh, he's, he's been doing this for a while. But really I don't know. fire this year. Everyone's just all over Twitter. RAS, RAS, RAS. Let me refresh this real quick. RAS Al Ghul. <laughs> Shout out to Batman. Uh, Liam Neeson. So, but I did want to point out, all right, we're, we're hyped. six, one, two, twenty. Right. He, so he's a little bit bigger, thicker frame guy. Ran Elite pretty, explosion. ran pretty well. Four, four, eight. Um, great explosion. Almost a 40 inch vertical. It's a four, four, six. Get um, it right, Casey. What'd I say? Four, four, eight. Yeah. That um, point oh two is very important. Sure. Um, but a big fella. But, you know, I did want to point out we're getting, you know, we're talking about all these guys and, and Hey, like I said, in the beginning of this, it's, it's to go look back at somebody you had somewhere and say, did I see this? Did I see that? And kind of maybe qualifying them a little bit more and putting in one more piece of the puzzle piece of a stamp next to their name. We're dropping them a little bit and saying, Hey, I got to rewatch that and see if I see some of this in their game. But at the bottom of the RAS score page here, it does tell you kind of some comps for this guy and and we're, we'll take jonathan mingo here as an example and the first one is andre johnson Woo, we'll awesome. take that the next four of these guys yeah. <laughs> i don't give a single fuck about any of them hey, give, give quincy and, my dude and give if, quincy you've, been, if dude. you've been watching us for a long time you know that quincy anuno was our guy we yeah. liked quincy yeah. that guy, guy was a fucking dog he yeah. just got fucking he got banged neck up a injuries. neck injury um, like multiple neck right. and back injuries so bummer for him um, but and you know we thought maybe he would work out, but Cody Lattimore never worked out. Sammy Coates, uh, Jalen Camp, and then there was this this score changed a little bit. Um, it went up to a nine three. It was a nine zero, and at nine zero, Moncrief was in there. Just a bunch of guys who never did a single fucking thing in the league. Yeah. Um, so you know, as as we're going forward and getting hyped up about these, there also there's another piece of the puzzle called how they actually play football. Oh, um, and, yeah. And so, but you know, just oh hey, <laughs> just gotta pump the brakes a little bit. And the score is great, but it also you can also go back and look at a bunch of dudes who had great scores who SDs uh, their entire <laughs> career. Um. You know, so sorry for that. Just wanted to uh, just yeah, loud laugh. <laughs> just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you got anybody else? And I'm sure there'll be some other guys who kind of pop up there um, as as people guys, people like Jalen Reed maybe didn't quite test as great as some people wanted after the nice time at the uh, senior bowl there. Um, I know people had him. I was kind of surprised that Ronnie Bell maybe didn't test a little better, um, but I we wasn't really on my radar a ton. Um, Xavier Hutchinson w was a guy I was kind of seeing how this would, would go for. Um, and it wasn't great, um, but not awful. He's, again, one of those a little bit bigger guys. He came in a little smaller than I thought. Six one two or 3 at Iowa State. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where he kind of ends up in the NFL draft here. Um, and then uh, Tank Dell from uh, Houston there. Um, not not the best smallest man available. Uh, yeah, not the best testing available. But people did like some of what he had going on at the Senior Bowl there. So, um, like I said, not a whole lot of movement. A couple of guys that I you know I want to go sh see a little get a little firmer on Tillman. Want to get a little firmer on Perry. Want to get a little firmer on Mingo. Mims. Uh, Mims. Want to go check out um, Rakeem uh, Jarrett. Jarrett. Um, a, a little bit more. I've watched all those guys a little bit, but haven't really dug into it. Right Yoshivas. Yeah, man, you got to obviously check in to see what Bryce Ford Wheaton's been up to. Uh, but, you know, so those are kind of some guys to go check out. And for me, nothing really changed a whole, whole lot in kind of how I was viewing these guys. All right, well, that'll wrap up quarterbacks and wide receivers. We've been going for a minute here, so I think we should cap this off. We'll start another video, do running backs and tight ends for your pleasure. Uh, if you've been watching on YouTube, definitely hit that like, subscribe button. Leave us a comment below who, who caught your eye, who let you down, who had you excited. Uh, we'll get in there in the comments. But appreciate y'all for listening, and we'll be back next time. Peace.